Welcome to Agent Noob everyone, and let's talk about the upcoming ranked mode in full detail of what we know so far. Let's dive right in. Before we begin, here's a quick summary of the current state of the game. Age of Empires 4 currently has a quick match system, which has an elo tied to each player and tries to match equally skilled opponents to one another. The main issue with just having one matchmaking system is the difference of playstyles. Some players love competition and are all about winning, improving and climbing the ladder. Others want to play casually, either solo or with friends and don't necessarily try hard. With the introduction of the ranked ladder, the separation of the player base will be very beneficial for both player types, as you will be less likely harassed in quick match as a casual player and more likely to get more serious allies and opponents on the ranked mode. It's a win-win. Straight off the bat, we've confirmed that the ranked seasons will consist of 12 weeks each, which is roughly 3 months. Now, we don't know if there will be a hard or soft reset to ranks at the end of each season, so this is something that we'll have to keep an eye out. As is the case with every modern ranked mode, you'll have to play a series of placement games to get your initial rank. These 5 games will most likely not be the best ones, but they are crucial to get somewhat of an accurate start for most players out there. Interestingly, Wonder Victories will also be one of the default win conditions in the ranked mode as well, so keep that in mind. Once you're placed, you'll gain RP, which stands for ranked points for each game you win, and, of course, lose RP for any games you lose. Players will be divided into general groups called Divisions, which comprise of Bronze, Silver, Gold, Platinum, Diamond, and Conqueror. Each of these divisions have three tiers each, so you'll have players in Bronze 1, 2, and 3, Silver 1, 2, and 3, and so on. If you've played any modern competitive game recently, you'll already be very familiar with the structure, as the divisions are pretty much a mirror of League of Legends with the exception of the Conqueror being in place of Master, Grandmaster, and Challenger. I actually think there should have been more tiers within each division, but we'll have to see how the player base settles in before making any further comments. As a side note, I want to emphasize that Conqueror is a fantastic name for the best division, as it is befitting of the game's setting as well as its epicness for the best of players. Good job devs on this one. That said, one thing that may have been an oversight for the developers is the differentiation of the Conqueror players. If the divisions work correctly, Conqueror players should typically be in the top 0.1%. This further differentiation is supposed to separate the top 1% from the top 0.01% and comes in terms of a separate division that is special for godlike players, or some sort of ranking number, either globally or regionally, to help distinguish the great players from the exceptional. Hence, we don't want players like Marine Lord, the Viper, Hera, or others being in the same division with a random player who will never even be able to qualify to any S tier tournament. Professional players are on a completely different level, and they should have this represented in the game somehow. This is exactly why Diamond players in League of Legends are amazing players in roughly the top 0.5% of all players, but they are still a far cry from Master, Grandmaster, and Challenger tier players, which separate the top 0.1%, 0.05% and 0.01% of all players respectively. Hence, when you think about it, there are 5 divisions that separate 99% of the player base in the ranked ladder and 4 divisions that separate the other 1% to compensate for the insane skill level difference at the top level. Of course, even League of Legends didn't have this refined system from the start, so with time, I'm sure that Relic will further refine the divisions as the player base and the esports scene evolves if they're paying close attention. Moving on from the divisions, finishing the season will grant you some in-game rewards based on which division you finish. Currently, there's a lot of placeholders in the beta, so this stuff isn't finished yet for us to take a look at deeply. That said, the developers mentioned that rewards come in the form of monuments to adorn your town center, as well as portraits and coat of arms pieces for you to customize your player profile. So it'll be more of the same type of customization you've seen so far. Overall, this is good stuff, but I hope they can build around this more extensively and truly reward folks who grind up the ladder. Alright, with those out of the way, here is some feedback for the developers that they've asked for from the beta participants. So here's my take. Number 1. The tier numbers changing inversely to the weapons displayed on the player's ranked icons is not the best design choice, and will definitely confuse newer players or folks who haven't played ranked before initially. So, Bronze 1, for example, will have 3 weapons, while Bronze 3 will have 1 weapon, even though Bronze 1 is better than Bronze 3. I'm okay with the number of tiers being in either ascending or descending order, as I don't think it matters at all normally, but it's currently not the best design to have with the naming convention they've opted to go for. Hence, if they're going to stick with the added weapons approach based on the tier of the player, I think they should swap the tier number ordering to go along with the emblems. Number 2, and this is admittedly nitpicking a bit, but I'm not sure I like the design of the division icons overall, especially up close. 
To my eye, they look too similar with mostly just a different coat of paint amongst them, and the weapons of the emblems don't differentiate themselves enough, especially at higher divisions. If we compare these icons to some other games, you'll notice a big difference. For example, League of Legends, at least for its last year, had amazingly designed helmets that progressively looked more epic. For Dota, I'm not a fan of their ranked medals overall, but their divine or immortal players had great icons as well. When I look at Conqueror in Age of Empires 4, which is an indication that you're one of the best to touch the game, it's meh, not really an emblem that I'd be proud to display on my profile. Why is there still a pitchfork or a measly axe on the emblem that are identical to those on the lower divisions, when those weapons should be some of the best ever crafted? Playing at that level is incredibly difficult and I think those players deserve a much more epic emblem to celebrate their prowess in Age of Empires 4. Obviously, I acknowledge there is some subjectivity around design in general, so some of you may still like the designs, but this is my two cents and I'll stick with it. Number 3, which is an extension to the previous point, the differentiation between the division icons needs some serious work. Let's go through a few examples. Take a look at the difference between Bronze 3 and Silver 3. It's just a different color and a different shape of a shield that is no way indicative that it's a better or stronger one. That's a whole division separating those two. What about Bronze 1 and Silver 3? Yes, the color is different, but Bronze 1 looks way more hardcore and epic compared to Silver 3, even though Silver 3 is the better player. In other words, if you ask an outsider who has zero context to compare those two emblems and ask who do they think is the better player, they'll almost always choose the Bronze 1 icon. You can kinda make the same argument with Bronze 1 and Gold 3 as well. If you lack context, then this is also a great comparison, even though there's a big difference between those two players. It gets worse though. Take a look at Plat 3 and Silver 1. They're way too close to one another, despite a Plat player being so much better. Diamond 3 and Plat 3 also don't showcase the difference in skill level enough as Diamond players are supposed to be top 1% players. And so on and so on. There are other examples, but you get the point. The approach they took with adding weapons for each tier is a wrong one in my opinion, as higher divisions with lower tiers often look too similar or, worse yet, lower ranked than lower divisions with higher tiers. I personally think they should scrap that approach and simply either go with something like stars to differentiate tiers, maybe an added tiny component to the main emblem here and there, or just not design anything for tiers and just stick with divisions, as tiers are way too small of a differentiator to have such a big design impact on the main emblem. This is one of the reasons why League of Legends helmet design approach was so good. They could progressively make helmets look more epic with added elements for easy differentiation, without the need to further classify tiers. You can easily tell which player is better throughout even if you haven't played a single single League of Legends game. And finally, number 4, the ranked UI needs a lot of work, as it is currently bare bones. Once again, I'll take League of Legends as an example here. Although not perfect, it showcases a lot of things very nicely on the fly. We can immediately see that this player is a slightly above average player sitting at gold 3, their honor level, which is the overall behavior of the player in game, as well as their strongest and most master champion. And with a hover, you can see their top 3. There are some other fluff here and there, but also a list of the ranked letter of where you exactly sit within the game's client. Hence, we can apply a similar structure to Age of Empires 4. Apart from showcasing your division and tier, your ranked profile, which should be accessible to others to look at as well, should perhaps showcase some sort of background from your favorite civilization or an in-game screenshot, have an honor system to track the behavior of the player, showcase their best performing civilizations, best performing maps, win rates, civilization matchups, and so on. There's a ton of potential here that is currently missing. Well, that's all you need to know about the upcoming rank mode and seasons in Age of Empires 4 and my two cents on how they can improve it in the future. This upcoming patch will include so many quality of life features that should have been in the game in the first place, but I'm happy they're finally coming soon for the game to feel a lot more complete. Hopefully, the scenario editor and the creative tools will come right after as well, so the community will finally be able to create custom maps, scenarios, mods, and other creative content to fuel some additional content to the game, as many players have been leaving the game due to its current stale state. I hope that the player numbers will recover a bit and increase once again. As always, thanks for watching everyone, best of luck on your climb on the ranked ladder when it comes out, and see you all in the next one.